I think one of the things that I kind of take for granted when building waterfalls like this is really taking full advantage of the natural characteristics of the stone and then letting water do what it's supposed to do. I'm looking right now at these bubbles coming down at the base of the waterfalls and you're seeing all these natural eddies. Now this rock would have been very easy to kind of level off and block up certain sides so we got more water coming off and more of a veil. Well, I really wanted water to roll off of that so it would really push. And as you can see, the bubbles kind of circle in here and you've got all these backwater eddy areas before they dog leg around this rock. All right, so we're back out here at this pondless waterfall that we're building out here in Wayne, Illinois, which is only about 10 minutes from our shop. If you remember from earlier in the video, we got a hell of a lot of rain out here and it really kind of screwed us up. So I'm back after a couple weeks letting the system dry out. We got everything completely done. And I got to tell you, I love it even more now than when I did on the day that we left. The thing that I love about this project so much was just the transformation. So if you remember, it was a huge dilapidated ecosystem pond. Now the approach was good, but the execution was horrible. There was a lot of big boulders not a lot of circulation and it just was totally overrun with weeds. Honestly, it looked like it had been neglected for years. When we were brought in by the homeowners, they wanted us to create this backyard oasis to go along with this incredible outdoor living space that they created out here. They've got a beautiful travertine patio over here that has a fire pit area, the grill, the barbie, and then you've got another individual seating area over there. And we really wanted to take advantage of all these southern exposure windows looking out onto this beautiful backyard. So what we did was is we completely tore everything out, got rid of all the granite boulders because what they really wanted was that moss rock weathered limestone look. They have visited a few of our projects that we've installed in the past and they really fell in love with that angular stone, that moss rock look, and they really wanted it to look night and day different from what they had. And I would say, judging by what the end result was, we nailed it. A couple things other than the transformation itself is just really the movement and the body of the stream itself. It's a split waterfall system. We've got a lower waterfall system over here on the left, and then on the right right hand side, that part of the waterfall is about two feet taller than the one on the left. I really like and appreciate those different elevation changes and we really utilize the existing slope that was here. As part of the renovation project, there was a huge pond here which left a huge cavity in the ground itself. So we brought in about six and a half to seven truck yards of filled dirt itself just to build this area back up to create this beautiful waterfall. So I'm starting to ramble on here and I could talk about this thing all day. Why well, don't I give you guys a little bit deeper dive and a closer look as some of the things that I really enjoyed about this project. Come on. side waterfall facing back from the house. Notice that it's carved into that hillside. If we didn't build up, there's no berm really associated with it. We did a really good job of incorporating that existing outcropping wall and tying it right into our boulder work, giving the appearance that that waterfall has always been here and the wall was built around that water feature. Another thing on this side, aside from the split waterfalls and kind of this rainy side on the left and a little bit more water on the right, is this kind of beach area that we always talk about. Now it's not a, your typical sand beach that one would find along an ocean front or anything like that. It's more this gravel beach area where it's smaller rock and gravel and that water is very, very close to the patio. Just a nice, easy, smooth transition. It's not bouldery and rocky. It's a, an edge technique that we commonly use just to break it up. We don't want to go rock, 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 rock all the way around and give it kind of this contrived look. We just really want to break it up using the scale of the rock and the gravel against each other and just really, really, really strengthen the design by doing some of these different edge treatments. Another thing that I really appreciate about this side, other than the waterfalls itself, is how it sweeps back into this patio, but then dog legs back hard to the left. There's incredible movement on both sides of the stream. That's what I really love about the waterfalls on the right, and then everything merges between the two waterfalls, and I think this is really cool. It's a big, wide, very, very shallow waterfall where the water just kind of rolls over this spillstone between this frame rock and that frame rock. I think one of the things that I kind of take for granted when building waterfalls like 
this is really taking full advantage of the natural characteristics of the stone and then letting water do what it's supposed to do. I'm looking right now at these bubbles coming down at the base of the waterfalls and you're seeing all these natural eddies. Now this rock would have been very easy to kind of level off and block up certain sides so we got more water coming off and more of a veil. But I really wanted water to roll off of that so it would really push. And as you can see, the bubbles kind of circle in here and you've got all these backwater eddy areas before they dog leg around this rock. Even right here, I love this, but that water, these bubbles come here, they hit the backside of this rock and you can see this current kind of rip around this rock, which is really, really cool. You see those switchbacks in nature all the time and water just continues to carve and it's just really, from an overhead aerial view, it's always this serpentine look in river systems, which is what we're really trying to create. As you can see, I hopped from back and forth across the stream, which is another favorite part of this water feature, is these huge stones, really flat. One of the punch list items or the wish list items from the customer was also to make this very interactive for their grandkids. They've got a five-year-old, Benny, that before we even finished the project was out here with his little toy boats and his rubber duckies and stuff and just playing in the water. I wouldn't have done it because the water was still about 40 degrees, but it just shows you how approachable these things are. And he was hopping and skipping around on all the rocks and it just really validated the overall design and what we were trying to accomplish. So just seeing that we really created something special for the grandkids and they want to be out here playing in this thing really just started to check all the boxes for us. I love this waterfalls. I just absolutely love it. I love the different style of waterfalls as it cascades down. Really, really different. One of the things that we try and do is we don't want every waterfall to be the same. You can see that the top waterfall is kind of this wider veil of water. That's about a two foot wide waterfall. It's only 16 inch tall, but it collects in a pooling area, which is actually a very deep pooling area. It's probably about 10 inches of water that it falls into, it swells up, and then it's pinched between the two rocks right there and that's what we call a pitcher style waterfall. Then what's cool is it collects back behind this rock, dog legs that way, and then splits around all of this. We've got water coming here, comes there, tucks back down through there, and then just falls back on top of itself. It's a really, really neat waterfall. Very, very unique. And then everything merges into the one, which is always a challenge when you're trying to merge two streams together and having it not look too rocky. We wanted to provide plenty of areas for softscape and plants, which will eventually be done by the homeowners. Probably the last thing I think that I'm proud of about this job is we sell these as low maintenance systems. And if you've watched some of the other videos from this project, you heard us talk about the bib liner on top of the basin. Let me show you the bib liner and how it actually works. Come here. So if you remember, that reservoir occupied this entire space. Now those reservoirs are a big square hole filled by aqua blocks, and then we cover everything up to make it look natural with rock and gravel. A lot of our videos, you see us putting bib liners or drop liners on top of the aqua blocks to get water to continue to travel over the top before it disappears down into the reservoir. You've heard me talk about what that does to the overall maintenance of these projects. Now our aqua blocks come all the way out into here, and we put these big slabs of stone on top of the aqua blocks themselves. What we did was we put a big drop liner right down in here. As you can see, all the leaf debris from the falling leaves from all the deciduous trees here this fall is starting to collect in this area. So what will happen is, is this leaf will drop onto the surface, get swept underneath here, and eventually gets pulled into here, which is where you see all this collection of leaf debris here. What makes the maintenance so easy is it's a centralized area. So it's very easy to come in here, make a big pile of leaves, and then pull them all out and just make more room for more of that leaf debris. So it's everything's collecting in one area rather than being scattered throughout this big kind of eight by eight foot area. One thing that I neglected to mention earlier about what I appreciate about this water feature is this green slate patio pond. Now this is one of the large patio ponds. It can be used as a standalone feature, but you've seen in some of our videos that we also use them as kind of these cool little funky additions just to add this architectural element to some of our water features. The reason we put it right here up front is a couple reasons. One is I wanted to cut in a couple little ribbon waterfalls into it. Something facing back towards the windows. I wanted to bring that closer to the patio space, the windows, all that stuff. But I also wanted to create an area for aquatic plants. I would love nothing more than to see like a big corkscrew rush, a bunch of water hyacinths, water lettuce in here, maybe like a small tropical water lily or something. But I wanted to create an area that would be possible to bring a touch of green into the water feature. We have all these areas, little backwater pockets in the stream itself, but I would love nothing more than to see this thing packed with water hyacinths and to see them in bloom in late summer would just look outside.
outstanding. Just another way to kind of spice up the water features. We had one laying around our shop. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to use it. So that's everything that I love about the water feature. One thing that I wanted to point out was just kind of on the technical side of things. We get a lot of questions regarding how do you plumb this? How does this work? How does that work? And on this project, on the left-hand waterfalls, we have an SLD 4,000 to 7,000 gallon per hour pump. And then on the right-hand waterfalls, we had an SLD 5,000 to 9,000 waterfalls. So we actually have two pumps sitting in the pump vault here in the reservoir with their respective plumbing lines going to the respective waterfalls. Other than that, it was a heck of a lot of liner. We did a lot of overlaps and a lot of seams on this job, as you saw through the video. But I think the end result turned out fantastic. It definitely paid to take our time, not rush through it and give in to Mother Nature. And it just turned out incredible. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let us know if you have any questions. As always, make sure you tune in next time every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. See ya.